Welcome back to My Sister's TBR. I'm Rebecca. And I'm Stacy, And we're back with another check-in episode. November is officially here, which means cozy nights curled up with a good book, and we've got plenty of recommendations to keep you entertained. We have news about Frida McFadden, Rebecca Yaros, and the HBO Harry Potter series. Ah! Uh, are you serious? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, plus, we'll be filling our TBR piles with some of the most exciting November releases. And as always, we'll be sharing our current reads and giving you our honest opinions and thoughts so far. So, grab your favorite mug, get comfy, and join us for another episode of My Sister's TBR. Alright, let's dive in. Please, because I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. Okay, can I just... Yes. Okay. Can I just say my news first and then yes, we can jump in? That's into what yours. I was gonna say. Leave leave the Harry Potter thing for the last. Okay. So I just have two little things about Frida McFadden. The first thing is, have you seen that they casted Andrew from the housemaid? I did. But I don't remember who it was. Oh no, I remember. Tell our listeners. Brandon Skellner. Ah! Skellner, Skellner, Skellner. Brandon, Brand, Brandon Skellner. And he was our Atlas. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. Also. Perfect. Did you know? I didn't realize this one because I'm watching 1923 right now. All right. We just finished it actually. Like the spinoff of Yellowstone. He's in that interesting yes i knew that yeah. because when we first started talking about him being cast for um it ends with us we had mentioned that he was in that series but i haven't watched it so it never really sunk in or meant gotcha. much to me so that's the first little piece of freedom mcfadden news the first then... oh no this is a new release oh yeah okay so just one free <laughs> One news about Freedom McFadden. <laughs> okay. That's still that's a bad. really good one. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited for that movie. I think that's going to oh. be done so well. I'm really curious how, like, without any spoilers, um, like, how they're going to bring that to screen. Like, that, especially, like, the plot twist in it. Like, is that going to... I think he's going to be able to do it very well. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. Uh, so what did you have about Rebecca Yarrow's? I think it might oh. be the same. A new film adaptation. Okay, this is not the same. Okay. Oh. What what did you okay. hear? Netflix developing film adaptation of Rebecca Yarrow's novel in the likely event. <gasps> I loved that novel. That one was so cute. Oh my god. Look at her go. Yep, she's taken off. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Is there any other information on it or just that they're in the works? Oh, well, it is adapted to the screen by Lindsay Ferrant Ferrantino. I don't know who that is. <laughs> It will be overseen by Brian Williams for Dylan Clark Productions and by Kyra. I can't pronounce that. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Oh, I'm so excited. That one was such a cute book. Well, cute. It was also like pretty devastating too in natural Rebecca Yarrow's fashion. Fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you would really like it. I'll add it to the TBR with everything else. <laughs> I'll get uh, there I eventually. Think I need to give up on my TBR because honestly, I 
I put things on it and it goes there to collect dust. Fair. I think you need to start fresh with your TBR, honestly. Probably, because there's a lot there from 2012 that, I mean, I am a very different person now than I was in 2012. Start over. (laughs) Start over. A clean slate. Oh, that'll be nice. So, um, what I heard about, not Harry Potter, not yet, there's (gasps) still one more thing. Um, Rebecca Yaros has dropped a little tidbit of Onyx Storm, which you cannot read because you have not finished... I haven't even Iron started Flame, right? Iron Flame yet. Uh, I need to. Okay. My thing is when I see a very big hardcover, massive book. Mm-hmm. It's intimidating. I know. she's. This she's is chunky. bigger than my head. But just look so, at. So it's just. I know. Just I look know. at it this way. That is so much Zayden. I There's know. so much Zayden also there. true. I know. It's just, I can't sit down and read this. I need to read it on my Kindle. Mm -hmm. So that I am peacefully unaware of how many pages. That's fair. I like that about the Kindle too. You can just hide how much is left in the book. Just (laughs) pleasantly keep reading. Yeah. Who knows where we are in the book? I don't. Out of sight, out of mind. It's okay. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, There's also the graphic audios for Fourth Wing and Iron Flame, if you wanted to try that. True. I have heard good things. Mm -hmm. True. I just, like, I have to be in the mood for the audiobooks. Yeah. My biggest thing with audiobooks is that I can't be around Audrey while listening to Mm -hmm. audiobooks because, for one, she does not stop talking. And two, if she sees anything in my ear, she's like, oh, can I listen? I'm just like... That you cannot, Audrey. That no. you cannot. <laughs> no. No. There's bad words Not yet, girly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Onyx Storm. There's like a little bit of a little look-see into Onyx Storm that was posted oh. with a magazine, I believe. But, Yeah. I haven't read it. I wanted to, but I don't know. I'm of two minds. I don't know if I want to give myself that little taste mm. or just wait. Because, I mean, it's it's going to be out in January, so. I think just wait. Yeah. Just Ugh. wait. Oh, I know. It'll hit a lot better going in with a completely. That's true. I'd say that's blank true. slate, but you did just read the first two books, so it's yeah. not a blank slate. I might reread Iron Flame in preparation. Damn. I know. That's very, yeah, very adventurous of me. I don't know. Maybe yeah. I won't be able to get around to it, but that is, that's one of my goals. I just want to try to read it before because I need that refresh. Okay. The last little bit of news that I've managed to scrounge. It's nothing huge. It's just that the HBO's Harry Potter series may have found its Dumbledore. Oh. Yes. If the reported casting pans out. So per Verity, the Oscar winning actor Mark Rylance is leading the casting wish list to play Dumbledore. Uh, reportedly, he's been approached to gauge his interest, but has not yet entered the negotiations. So hmm. it's still far from a done deal. But yeah, it's, it looks like but it's, it, something. it's something. It's some little it's something. crumbs. Uh, I I mean, I could I could see it. Add on a beard and some gray hair. Yep. I'm very excited for the series. I know so many people are like, like on the fence about it saying like, oh, the original three and like being like, oh, how dare you stand where he stood? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I'm ready. I, Me too. I get it that like you don't want to let go of 
you know, Harry Potter being Daniel Radcliffe, you know, Rupert Grint mm-hmm. and Emma Watson. I get that, like, they are the three, but they're the OGs. Like, nobody is going to come into these roles and just take it from them. No. They are the original. Yes. They're always going to be the original. Mm-hmm. But we do also need more of that story because anybody that's read the books and watched the movies know that the movies, literally the tip of the iceberg. There's so much Insane. that couldn't be included in the movies or that they changed. And I just feel like this is a, this is the right time for it, I think. Especially yeah. with how popular um, reading has become again. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's really True. exploded again. So I think this is the right time for it. I can't wait. I'm, I'm excited, so excited for it. I want all those other stories. <sighs> Yeah, that yeah. was. Oh, there was another little bit though. Um, in the whole Harry Potter universe sort of thing, um, the I don't know if you call it the sequel, maybe to Hogwarts Legacy. They're going oh. to be sort of like cooperating with the HBO series, so that's an interesting takeaway as well. I, I spent so many hours on that game so many hours i wish we could go back to playing it side by side oh my god when we changed the time on the xbox oh so we could play it earlier we had the two (laughs) tvs set up and it was just perfection i want to go back to that that was such an exciting serotonin oh my god like core memory yeah being made right there oh love it Okay. The new releases. Oh. Yes. So we talked about this book a little while ago when it was just little whispers of what Emily McIntyre was coming up with. Right? It was just like little... And she was trying to get people to, to you know, or people were speculating what her newest book was going to be, what book number six in the Never After series was going to be. And people are like, oh, it's going to be Hercules. No, it's going to be The Little Mermaid. Uh, So it turns out it was The Little Mermaid. But not really. Oh. I'm intrigued. Uh Uh-huh. So this is a dark romance and fantasy it's 544 pages and this came out november 5th so run hexed by emily mcintyre it's book number six in the never after series he's the prince of lacosa nostra she's the witch who steals his heart vanessa anderson has never been good she wasn't good enough for her parents and she isn't good enough for the gangster uncle who took her in after they died But she's cunning, beautiful, dutiful to her uncle's demands, and she doesn't have time for a moral compass. When her runaway cousin returns to their coastal southern town, she brings a man with her, and Vanessa soon realizes he's the only one who's ever seen her for her. There's just one problem. She can never have him. Enzo, lover boy, Marino, is a wealthy businessman by day and prince of the underworld by night, underboss to the notorious mafia syndicate. He answers to no one except his father, the strongest Don in the Northeast. When he's tasked with marriage, Enzo doesn't think twice, until he meets his fiancé's cousin. Vanessa is everything he never knew he wanted, bewitching him with her sultry voice and subtle, supple curves. But Enzo learned long ago that for a man like him, life is better without the things you want. When plans unravel and temptation sings its siren song, they'll both have to choose what's more important duty to their families, or forbidden love that was never supposed to be. So this is more so like an Ursula. Oh. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. And I've been seeing a lot of good reviews on it. So I know I've skipped a number of her books in this series, but I I might just jump and read this one. They're all individually. Like, yes. Yeah. And they're all like, they're not really retellings. She doesn't like using that word, but they 
are little yeah like they're uh resemble these darker sides of fairy tales mm. okay mm-hmm very intriguing. Ooh. Mm-hmm. I love the cover as well. Yes. Beautiful. Oh, all of her covers are like stunning. I keep forgetting about this series. I want to start it. It's so good. <laughs> so this is Lost and La- Lasso. Yeah. Lassoed? Lassoed. Lassoed by Layla Sage. This is the Rebel Blue Ranch series, the third book. Don't know why I worded it like that. <laughs> um, this is a Western romance, 313 pages. And it came out November 5th. I'm very into like the Yellowstone 1983 and 1903 right now. Pick this up. Read this series. <sighs> I want a cowboy. I have I another picture cowboy. to show you. Please. If you want, like, the nice, well, I say nice, but it's, it's more of, like, a fluffy romance, go for this series. But I have another one to send you after that's more of the, like, dark bull rider. Oh, I'd rather that. Thanks. BDSM. Okay. Naughty, naughty. I'll send that one. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. Where's my pearls? <laughs> Um, Long guy. Okay, description. (laughs) Yeah. She thrives in chaos. He prefers routine. The only thing they have in common, how much they hate each other. Oh, enemies to lovers. (laughs) Teddy Anderson doesn't have a plan. She's never needed one before. She's always been more of a go with the flow type of girl, but for some reason, the flow doesn't seem to be going her way this time. Her favorite vintage suede jacket has a hole in it. Her sewing machine is broken and her best friend just got engaged. Suddenly, everything feels like it's starting to change. Teddy's used to being a leader, but now she feels like she's getting left behind, wondering if life in the small town she loves is enough for her anymore. Gus Ryder has a lot on his plate. He doesn't know what's harder, taking care of his family's 8,000 acre ranch or parenting his spunky six-year-old daughter who is staying with him for the summer. Gus has always been the dependable one, but when his workload starts to overwhelm him, he has to admit that he can't manage everything on his own. He needs help. His little sister's best friend, the woman he can't stand, is not who he had in mind. But when no one else can step in, Teddy's the only option he's got. Teddy decides to use the summer to try and figure out what she wants out of life. Gus, on the other hand, starts to worry that he'll never find what he needs. Tempers flare, tensions build, and for the first time ever, Gus and Teddy start to see each other in a different light. As new feelings start to simmer below the surface, they must decide whether or not to act on them. Can they keep things cool, or will both of them get burned? Oh, I love a good enemies to lovers. Enemies to lovers and single dad. Mm. Yep. Check, check. (laughs) And a cowboy. <laughs> oh, I'm excited for that. That sounds good. Speaking of Rebecca Yarrows, busy, oh. busy girl. <laughs> she has a new book coming out. Variation. This is a contemporary romance. It's 459 pages and it is expected November 19th. Elite ballerina Ali Russo is no stranger to pressure. With her mother's eyes always watching, perfection was expected no matter the cost. But when an injury jeopardizes all she sacrificed for, Ali returns to her summer home to heal and recover. But the memories she's tried to forget rush in and threaten to take her under. As a Coast Guard rescue swimmer, Hudson Ellis knows that hesitation can mean the difference between life and death. He's always prided himself on being in the right place at the right time, especially when it came to Ali Russo until the night he left for basic. After the biggest regret of his life, the secrets he keeps mean he can never be with the one woman he wants more than his next breath. When Hudson's niece shows up on Allie's doorstep, desperate to find her birth mother, Allie finds herself in an unimaginable position. 
Allie and Hudson's past and present might be endlessly complicated. The thread that ties them to each other all those years ago may have unraveled, but the truth could pull them back together or drive them apart forever. Oh. Oh, I wonder if this one's going to be a absolute heart-wrenching book like her others. Of course it's going to (sighs) be. Okay. So the next one is... A Very Bad Thing by J.T. Ellison. This is a mystery thriller, 446 pages, and it came out on November 1st. A great writer knows when to deliver a juicy plot twist, but for one author, the biggest twist of all is her own murder. With a number of hit titles and a highly anticipated movie tie-in, celebrated novelist Columbia Jones is at the top of her game. Fans around the world adore her, but on the final night of her latest book tour, one face in the crowd makes the author collapse, and by the next morning, she's lying dead in a pool of blood. Columbia's death shocks the world and leaves Darian, her daughter and publicist, reeling. The police have nothing to go on at first, but then details emerge pointing to the author's illicit past. Turns out many people had motive to kill Columbia. And with a hungry reporter and frustrated cop on the trail, her secrets won't stay buried long. But how many lives will they shatter as the truth comes out? Ooh. Interesting. Okay, that's an interesting... I love a good mystery thriller. Yeah. And this one sounds different. There's something different about it. Yeah. Hmm. I'm intrigued. Looks like we might have a new romance to see. Uh, (gasps) servant of earth by sarah howley uh this is the first book in the shards of magic series it's as i said it's a romantic um adult romantic at that even better (laughs) 464 pages and it was released november 12th in the underground fey realm okay fey i'm sold Done. Sign us up. (laughs) Only the strongest and most ruthless have power, but a young human woman forced into a life of servitude is about to change everything. Kenna Heron is best known in her village for being a little wild, some say half feral, but she'll need every ounce of that ferocity to survive captivity in the cruel fey court. Trapped as a servant in the fairies' underground kingdom of Mistai, Kenna must help her new mistress undertake six deadly trials, one for each branch of magic, fire, earth, light, void, illusion, and blood. If she succeeds, her mistress will gain immortality and become the heir to the earth house. If she doesn't, the punishment is death for both mistress and servant. With no ally but a sentient dagger of mysterious origins, Kenna must face monsters, magic, and grueling physical tests. But worse dangers wait underground, and soon Kenna gets caught up in the secret rebellion against the inventively sadistic Fairy King. When her feelings for the rebellion's leader turn passionate, Kenna must decide if she's willing to risk her life for a better world and a chance at happiness. Surviving the trials and overthrowing a tyrant king will take cunning, courage, and an iron will, but even that may not be enough. Yup. Yup. Yep. Yep. I love, I know it's done so much, but I love the whole human girl in the fake court. Like, I I will eat that up every time. Because we can live vicariously. Yeah. We can dream. Like, if I could. Walk out in the woods? Yeah. <laughs> if a wolf came into the woods right now, I would follow it out and try to hunt it just so that I can stumble upon some fey men who would try to kill me at first and that's yeah. i'd probably actually pee my pants and curl up in a corner but yeah me, th- i would me like too. to believe that i am tough enough to uh <laughs> yeah <sighs> the dream to just go frolic in the woods and wait for the fey to come take us <laughs> i hope that's my heaven i think i'm past the age <laughs> why what books do you read that have a 30 plus year old female <laughs> human that gets taken by Faye? It's always young. It's time. It's time to write them. <laughs> um, okay. The next one is The Lake of Lost Girls by Catherine Green. 
This is a mystery thriller, 320 pages, and it came out on November 5th. Told in alternating timelines. Yes. <laughs> yes. We love that. <sighs> the Lake of Lost Girls is a haunting novel that will thrill fans of all good people here, and we are all the same in the dark. I don't know what those books are. Me neither. Never heard of them. Hmm. Using suspenseful podcast clips to weave a twisty tale of a missing student and her sister who is desperate for answers. The Lake of Lost Girls is perfect for fans of I Have Some Questions for You. It's 1998 and female students are going missing at Southern State University in North Carolina. But freshman Jessica Fadley, once a bright and responsible student, is going through her own struggles. Just as her life seems to be careening dangerously out of control, she suddenly disappears. 24 years later, Jessica's sister, Lindsay, is desperately searching for answers and uses the momentum of a new chart-topping true crime podcast, but 10 seconds to vanish that focus oh my god that focuses on the cold cases to guide her own investigation that was a tongue twister of a sentence that was a really like run-on sentence i think uh soon interest reaches fever pitch when the bodies of the long missing women begin turning up at a local lake which leads Lindsay down a disturbing road of discovery in the present, one sister seeks to untangle a complicated web of, web of lies. In the past, the other descends ever deeper into a darkness that will lead to her ultimate fate. <sighs> this propulsive and chilling suspense is a sharp examination of sisterhood and the culture of true crime. Ooh. Huh. Oh. Oh. Uh, so that's it for our new releases, but I just want to bring up the one that was in my, what I had saved. Ooh, Yes. So this is another new release. It is The Housemaid's Wedding by Frida McFadden. Oh. A short story. So this can be read either between book two and three or after book three. Okay. Best to just wait till after book three, I think. Um, this is coming out November 22nd. Today is supposed to be the happiest day of my life. I'm engaged to the man of my dreams, and in a few short hours, I'm going to stand before a judge who will declare us husband and wife till death does us part. Despite some bumps in the road, this day is everything I dreamed it would be. There's only one problem. Someone out there doesn't want me to live long enough to say my vows. And if I'm not careful, they may very well get their wish. Oh, wow. That that was it? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Just a short story. Okay. How many pages was it? I didn't get that in my screenshot. Oh, okay. Interesting. I just finished a Frida uh, short story. Yeah, you should have waited until December. Sorry. How many books are you currently juggling? <sighs> Can you juggle with one book? Is that just called catch? Yeah, that's. I don't think that's juggling. <laughs> I tried to pick up another book. I don't want to stop reading the featured read. I know. I literally can't. If I'm sat down and I'm reading something, I'm going to be reading this auction. The auction. I can't. I can't not. No. I can't. Agreed. I know. I'm struggling with it. I have been forcing myself because I just, I don't want to read it too fast. Yeah. But I it's very hard. I am reading three other books currently. Oh. So that's not that's not too too bad. That's not bad. It's, no. It's not the it's not the most that I've ever had on the go at once. <laughs> True. I will say, for the record though, just because I'm reading one book right now does not mean that I'm still in my book slump that I was in for the last like month and a half. I am well out of my book slump. Ooh. I'm like at like 60 something percent of the auction. So it took Germione to take you out of your book yep. slump? Oh. Yep. Works every time. So anybody out there, if you're experiencing, yep, a reading rut, pick up some good old Germione fan fiction because... It'll work every time. 
It did it. <laughs> Can't wait to keep reading tonight. <laughs> So my first book that I'm reading that I will discuss is mm-hmm. Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. Oh. Oh. So yes. question, are you reading this as number one? What do you mean? Are you reading this as number one in the series? Oh, I understand. Is this yes. number one in the series? Yes. Um, okay. S- there's a few different reading orders that everybody mm-hmm. likes to fight over um i am not going to fight over it i'm just going to say that i am waiting until we finish the second book to read assassin's blade a lot of people say to read a first a lot of people say to read it fourth and a lot of people mm-hmm. say to read a third so i'm just i'm gonna read a third i'm just okay. putting that out there <laughs> do you Yes. So Throne of Glass was the book club book and also the other podcast book. And I guess maybe I should do a little little blurb here um, just to let mm-hmm. people know what, what I'm talking about because I sound ridiculous. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Ilsa, which I have mentioned a bunch of times, um, has started up a podcast, Caffeine and Conjuring. That we're going to be going through the uh, Sarah J. Mass universe and we're starting with Throne of Glass. That is why I'm reading Throne of Glass right now because it's also the book club book and the other podcast. Um, Heck yeah. Yeah. So it's just two for one, which is we love that. <laughs> so much easier. <laughs> it is. Yeah. So uh, this is a, for anyone who does not know, is a YA fantasy romance and our girl sarah j mass was 16 years old when she wrote this book like that floors me yeah crazy so this book i'll just read the description it's it's not very long um in a land without me matt mood yep in a land without magic where the king rules with an iron hand, Selena, an assassin, is summoned to the castle. She comes not to kill the king, but to win her freedom. If she defeats 23 killers, thieves, and warriors in a competition, she's released from prison to serve as the king's champion. The crown prince will provoke her. The captain of the guard will protect her. But something evil dwells in the castle of glass, and it's there to kill. When her competitors start dying one by one, Selena's fight for freedom becomes a fight for survival and a desperate quest to root out the evil before it destroys her world. This is such a good book. I, like, devoured the first half of the book. I could not put it down. Damn. Yeah. It took a little bit to start. Um, her character, I mean, yes, she is a complete badass, but there's also some, like, teenage angst here. So, like, Hmm. being 30 plus reading it, it's kind of hard to connect sometimes, but it's still such a good, I love the world that she's building here. And yeah, I just really, really like it. (laughs) I think she's going to be a very high rating at the end of the month. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, the other one I'm reading... (laughs) I don't even know if I want oh. that. <laughs> what is it? What is it? <laughs> it's it's not as crazy as like the Vera Valentine that I've read. It's not that crazy. Mm. It's it's kind of getting there, but um. So I decided to start reading the Duskwalker Bride series by Opal Rain, A Soul to Keep. You know what? Yeah. 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 Sometimes you just need to say, like, fuck men and read (laughs) demons. Or I guess technically they're they're not demons. But anyways. At this point, give it to me. (laughs) Uh, So this is a paranormal fantasy romance. Very adult. Very adult. Scrumptious. All Rhea ever wanted was freedom. Known as a harbinger of bad omens and blamed for demons eating her family, Rhea is shunned by her entire village. 
When the next offering is due and the monstrous Duskwalker is seen heading their way, her village offers her an impossible choice. Be thrown into the prison cells or allow herself to be sacrificed to a faceless monster. However, he's not what he seems. His skull face and glow eyes are ethereal and she finds herself unwittingly enchanted by him. All Orpheus ever wanted was a companion. Each decade, in exchange for a protection ward from the demons that terrorize the world, Orpheus takes a human offering to the Vale, the place where he lives, and the home of demons. The brief companionship does little to ease his loneliness, and their lives were always unfortunately cut short. He thought it was a hopeless endeavor until he met her. She's not afraid of him, and his insatiable desires deepens within every moment of her presence. But will Orpheus be able to convince Rhea to stay before she's lost to him forever? Ooh. So he's like just looking for companionship. Man, same. And she's all like, oh my god, it's, you know, I'm I don't know. Like, she's not afraid of him. They make note of that often that she's not like actually like fearful um Mm. he still has some like base instincts like if he smells fear on her like you think of it like they say like dogs can sense when you're scared Mm. very similar like he's that's why he's so like curious about her because he doesn't like smell fear on her and it's not like like making that click in his head like like fear attack yeah but sometimes like he does have to face uh, like his base instinct to you know kill sort of thing so it's just really interesting to get that <laughs> dynamic between him this big scary dusk walker and her this like little human yeah and the it's just it's worth the read as crazy as it sounds it's worth it <laughs> oh my god and i'm listening i'm not judging at all Good. <laughs> I'm listening to this one on audio, so it's um oh his voice is very like low and it just it scratches something in my brain. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's it's really good so far. I'm almost done. So and the only other one that I'm reading is Tattered by Devney Perry. So she's the one who did the Juniper oh. Hill. The, I, I was like yeah. obsessed with that whole series. Um, so this is Lark Cove. It's not a new series, but I had no idea about it until like two days ago. Uh, it's another contemporary romance. Does she write anything other than contemporary romance? I don't think. <laughs> this one is about Thea Landry. She's always known her place in modern day society. It's somewhere just above the trash can her mother dumped her in as a newborn, but below the class where much comes easy. With her tattered shoes and bargain bin clothes, her life has never been full of glamour. So when a rich and charismatic man takes interest, she doesn't fool herself into thinking their encounter is anything more than just a one night stand. Months later, she's kicking herself for not getting his phone number or his last name. She's given up hope of ever seeing him again until one day, Years later, Logan Kendrick waltzes into her life once more and turns everything she's built upside down. This time around, she won't make the same mistake. She's going to fight to keep him in her life, not for herself, but for their daughter. (laughs) Yes. The twist. So, six years. Six years. She couldn't find him. She had no idea who he was. All that they have were just four, like, first names. Um, And they only had that, like, 24 hours together or whatever it was. Um, So, yeah. And now he just happens to be in the town that she's living in. The only issue I have with this book so far is how often she like to make it obvious that he's rich like she'll talk about um like she'll point out his watch she'll point out like the name of his suit or his shoes like it's just it's very overkill how often it's mentioned Mm -hmm. so it kind of gives me a bit of an ick like i know he's rich you already said that like he's the we get the big guy in this company so like i don't know i just i didn't like that but Overall, I mean, it is a great, great read so far. It's been hard to put down. 
Yeah. That's an interesting take. I like that. Uh-huh. And now... You go for it. The featured read. Give it to us. So, our featured read for November is The Auction by Loves Bitka 8. <sighs> <sighs> So last November, our featured read was also a Dramini fanfic, which was... Arguably the best. Definitely. Manacled by Sin Lin Yu. Beautiful. Honestly, I didn't think we could ever find another book to actually compare. Mm -hmm. This is getting up there. It's not replacing it. Because I loved how dark Manacled was. Mm -hmm. This isn't as dark. But, oh, love it. I know. It's like crack. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) How many pages is it? 800 and something? Yeah, she's big. It's 724 pages. Okay. According to Goodreads. She big. I think Manacled was 800 and some odd. Yeah. So... The Auction by Love's Bitka 8 is a fan fiction set in the Harry Potter universe where Voldemort wins the Battle of Hogwarts and Harry is killed. In this AU, the surviving Order members and sympathizers are captured and sold at an auction to the highest bidders. Hermione Granger, the former Golden Girl, is the top prize and is sold to Draco Malfoy. <laughs> <sighs> The story explores themes of love, redemption, and betrayal in a dark and twisted world. It is a popular and well-regarded fan fiction with many readers praising its character development, intense plot, and emotional depth. However, it is also a mature story with themes of violence and sexual content, and it is not suitable for all readers. Definitely not. Big content warnings. Yeah. How far are you now in it? 51%. I have slacked off because I was trying to hold off until we get close to the end of the month. Oh, I thought it was further. I'm at 58%. Okay, we're very close. I freaking love this book. (laughs) The only thing I'm going to say is good God, is it ever a freaking slow burn. Oh, I know. (laughs) At least we get lots of attempts. Yep. The tension is there, too. Like, yeah. Love the tension. But yeah, you don't, yeah. You don't get that, like. You're right there. Yes, I know. I know. (laughs) So close. Like, thinking back to Manacled, I think we got more other characters Mm. than this one. This one feels like it is very more so... I don't know. I don't know, though. Maybe not, because we do get a lot more Pansy and Blaze in this one. Blaze. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I love, like... I keep meaning to, like, highlight the things that I see, but, like, there's so many, obviously, there's so many Harry Potter references. But there's, like, little, little, I know, like, sprinkles (sighs) of references to actual Harry Potter, if that makes sense. I know. Like, even at one point, she mentions a book in a certain page, and it's page 394. I noticed that. Right? Like. Yep. Like, there's no yep. way she just picked randomly that page. It had to be because it's turned to page 394. <laughs> One thing I noticed, too, obviously we'll have to discuss this more in depth at the end of the month after we're done. But um, one little thing that I really liked. I don't know if you're there yet. Mm-hmm. Have you reached Hermione's birthday yet? It might be Christmas. Okay. Hold on. I'll just talk about it. Um so, you know, in the books, of like the Harry Potter books, Hermione has this club about supporting the elves. Mm-hmm. What is that again? Yeah, spew. spew. Yeah. So, in that, 
she also like knits a lot of like tea cozies and stuff like that for all of the elves, right? And starts laying them around the common room. Mm -hmm. So in this book, I think it was on like Christmas, maybe, maybe Christmas. Anyway, Mippy? Yeah. Narcissa's elf. I think so. Mippy. I think so. She gives Hermione like a knit hat or a knit something. Oh my God, I'm butchering this right now. But she knits something for Hermione. And I just thought that was really cute. Like it probably had nothing to do with like Hermione knitting the elves things. But I just like, that just put me right in mind. Like, I don't know. I thought that was so cute. It was probably a nod to it. And then there was also another comment that I think Draco made. And he was like, oh, Hermione, since you love the elves so much in Hogwarts, like, blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah. I don't know. I just, it's the little tiny details. It is. It's the it's those details that make make you feel like you're still in the Harry Potter universe. It may be an alternate universe, mm-hmm. but she still brings in a lot of Rowling's, yeah. you know, universe, which is great. <laughs> I love it. <sighs> Me too. I just, I know my heart is going to be ripped out of my chest. So I'm just waiting for that. Buckle up. Yeah. Yep. It's going to I mean, we're only halfway. Definitely. We're only halfway. And there's been so much information. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I think that this is really going to be up there with Manacled. Like I've been after reading quite yeah. a bit of Germani fan fiction now and currently still reading some others that i had to put on pause because i didn't want to mix it up too much with the auction but yeah this is definitely one of the best i don't think it's gonna surpass manacle just because it's i i don't think anything will ever hit me like manacle did i just have that like emotional but the fact that this book can be or this fan fiction can be Compared to Manacled, I think that is a huge accomplishment for Julie Soto. Speaks volumes. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I thought it was so cool that this is it's currently taken down off of fan... Um, I was going to say fanfiction.net. <laughs> That's old school. Um, but I think it's currently taken down off of AO, AO3 because it's in preparation of being published Oh, as its own novel. Obviously, some things are going to be changed in it. But if anybody remembers, we had an episode previously where we talked about it. Where we talked about how Julie Soto had revealed that this book was going to be published. And she sort of dropped hints to it. So is is that who Love's Bitka 8 is? Yes. Oh. And if anybody recognizes her name... She's the one who wrote, like, Not Another another Love Song, Forget Me Not. Oh. Yes. So it's not surprising how well this book, this fan fiction is written because she is, she is very talented. I really like her books. So, so she actually uh, announced that the auction is being adapted as a fantasy trilogy. And it's <clears throat> quoted... Rose in Chains introduces a heroine living in a fantasy world torn between two kinds of magic. The war is over, the dark forces have won, and the hero who is supposed to save them is dead. Captured as her castle is overrun by the enemy, Bryony Rosewood is stripped of her magic and auctioned off to the highest bidder. She's sold to Toven Hairst, scion of a family known for their cruel control of magic and the object of her long time and ill-fated infatuation. Yet despite the horrors of the new of her new world and the role she must learn to play within it, all is not lost. Mm-hmm. Like that still sounds like it's is going to be it's going to be this book. Just yeah. published. It's going to be a little more polished and take Different out names. all of the actual Harry Potter trademarks copyrighted yeah. things yeah yeah so that's oh. exciting so good i can't wait for the end of month episode where we can actually talk about everything yeah with spoilers yeah 
But I guess for now, that'll be it. <laughs> you need to go right. eat and I need to go sleep. <laughs> yep. Three and a half time difference. <sighs> Fun Therefore, stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, make sure to rate us and subscribe and mm-hmm. follow us on Instagram. Don't forget to come back to our end of month episode to hear all about the other books that we've read this month. I will read more than just this one. I promise. <laughs> Alrighty. Toodles. See ya. See ya.